Mark Goodall was born in 1964 in Phoenix, Arizona, as the second youngest of 13 children. His parents were Willie, a car dealer lot attendant, and Alberta, a maid, both of whom later divorced. Though Willie was strict, the household was, according to one of Goodall's siblings, peaceful. Other siblings say that Willie was verbally abusive and that alcoholism ran in the family. Alberta died in 1976 when Goodall was 12. He went to high school at Corona del Sol High in Tempe, Arizona. He was good at sports and played football for the school team, but didn't graduate due to not having enough credits. On November 7, 1982, he and a brother were arrested for raping a young woman, but no charges were pursued. He was charged with trespassing in 1987 and with driving under the influence the following year. In August 1989, he was charged with abducting a woman, brutally raping, and bludgeoning her. He claimed that she willingly had oral sex with him and that the rape and assault was the work of two other men. He was sentenced to 15 years for the abduction and 21 years for a 1990 robbery. After serving 13 years in prison as a model inmate, he was paroled in 2004 and moved into a house not far from the baseline killer crime area with his wife, Wendy Carr. Though his neighbors all knew that he had served time in jail, he was so well liked that they could look past it. He got a job as a construction worker for a company called Select Build. The year after his parole, the baseline killer crimes began. Gundo was first referred to as the baseline rapist when Phoenix police announced that a light-skinned black male was sexually assaulting females as young as 12 years old at gunpoint near Baseline Road. Gundo would later be dubbed the baseline killer in the spring of 2006 after investigators linked him to a series of murders and armed robberies. The crimes later spread north, primarily in the north-central area of Phoenix, Arizona. Gundo is believed to have committed nine counts of first-degree murder, the victims were eight women and one man, in addition to 15 sexual assaults on women and young girls, 11 counts of kidnapping, and a number of armed robberies. Although not initially linked, the crimes were distinguished by having no apparent motive, and the murders were particularly brutal, with the killer often shooting the victims in the head. The criminal was often described wearing various disguises such as a Halloween mask as well as attempting to impersonate a homeless man or drug addict. Police say that the shell casings found at each of the crime scenes all came from the same gun. Phoenix police spent thousands of hours patrolling and following up on hundreds of tips during the summer of 2006. As residents of Phoenix became increasingly alarmed by the random nature of the violent crimes, Community meetings were called by the police to distribute a sketch based on the description given by the surviving victims. Frustration and fear covered the city as posters and billboards displayed the sketch of the baseline killer, offering a $100,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. It took the police over a year to finally come up with a viable suspect. Mark Gundo was at the time on community supervision, parole with the Arizona Department of Corrections and supervised out of the Northeast Parole Office. In August 2006, parole officers in the Northeast Parole Office provided information to the Phoenix Police Department Task Force suggesting that Gudo matched the sketch of a baseline killer. Parole officers searched Gudo's residence and found a ski mask and a realistic toy handgun. Police used this information to obtain a search warrant for Gudo's residence and found additional items that linked him to crimes committed by the baseline killer. On September 4, 2006, Mark Gudo was arrested in connection to the sexual assault of two Phoenix sisters, an attack which was tied to the baseline killer investigation. The sisters, one of whom was visibly pregnant, were assaulted in a Phoenix City Park on September 20, 2005. Gundo was linked to the attack by DNA evidence collected shortly following the time of the crime. On September 7, 2007, Gundo was tried and convicted of all 19 charges relating to the attack on the two sisters. He was sentenced on December 14, 
2007, to 438 years in prison for the sexual assault charges. On November 30, 2011, a Phoenix jury sentenced him to death on the murder charges relating to the baseline killings. Gundo is held on death row in ASBC Florence, awaiting execution. Phoenix police released hundreds of pages of documents that detailed their investigation into the baseline killer. The paperwork obtained by ABC News revealed that police had at least 10 names of possible suspects that they had looked into, and that they had already ruled out some of those people. The 20,000 pages of police reports were primarily of other suspects with very little mention of Mark Gudo. The documents revealed information on nine cases ranging from a double homicide to sexual assaults, robberies, and kidnappings. The new information included police reports and narratives that described where and who police were looking at in the investigation. They also discussed investigative leads, however, much of the information was redacted. According to the documents, the baseline killer posed as a homeless person in one incident, pushing a shopping cart toward a woman in a parking lot near 32nd Street and Thomas Road. He forced himself into her car and told her to perform oral sex upon him or he would kill her. She fought him off, the records said. In that incident, the man believed to be the baseline killer was wearing gloves, a mask, and clothing that covered his entire body. The records show police worked to obtain partial handprints, DNA, and ballistics reports to build their case, but those results were blacked out on the paperwork. While being interviewed by police in Kentucky on a burglary case, James Dwayne Mullins claimed responsibility for the murder of Georgia Thompson on September 8, 2005. Mullins told police he shot Thompson as she attempted to rob him outside the Scottsdale Strip Club where she worked. However, Thompson's body was found almost 10 miles away in Tempe at her apartment complex. Police do not believe she was killed elsewhere. Mullins changed his story when police definitively linked the homicide to the baseline killer. Since then, he has told police that he was not in Arizona. Mullins denies any involvement in Thompson's death. On August 3, 2006, murder charges against Mullins were dropped. Authorities stated that Mullins had caused a significant diversion of resources during the hunt for the genuine killer. In April 2009, the Times Publications, a chain of publications in the Phoenix metro area, published a story revealing that the Phoenix Police Department had possessed the key DNA evidence that was eventually used to crack the baseline killer case nine months before the arrest, but failed to analyze it in a timely manner. On September 4, 2006, Phoenix police announced an arrest in connection with a sexual assault previously linked to the baseline killer while serving his search warrant at 28th Street and Pinchot Avenue. Police arrested Mark Gudo, a construction worker living in Phoenix. Gudo was charged with attacking two sisters on September 20, 2005, while they were walking home from a Phoenix City Park at night. Gudo was linked to the attack by matching DNA evidence found on the victims. Gundo was tried and convicted on all 19 counts connected to the assault and all murders related to the baseline killer investigation. During the trial, the two sisters gave testimony that Gundo suddenly approached them with a gun in his hand. They were forced into nearby bushes and told to remove their clothing. The victims said Gundo sexually assaulted the younger sister as he pointed his gun at the other sister's pregnant abdomen. Prosecutors said Gudo warned the women not to look at his face during the assault. They also stated he rubbed dirt on one of the women to remove saliva traces, and wore a condom during the assault on one of the sisters. Maricopa County Attorney Andrew Thomas stated he would seek the death penalty on Gudo if he were convicted in a murder trial. Gudo's wife, Wendy Carr, told the Associated Press that police arrested the wrong man, my husband is innocent. Carr reportedly said in a telephone interview. This is a huge miscarriage of justice. And they have an innocent man in prison. This is all a mistake. He shouldn't be in prison for something he didn't do. Gundo was described as a loving husband and exceptionally friendly neighbor who took meticulous care of his lawn. Friends and family deny any possibility that Gundo could be the baseline killer, 
saying he was framed by Phoenix police who were desperate for a suspect. According to Arizona prison officials, Gudo is an ex-convict who served 13 years of a 21-year sentence for aggravated assault, including beating a woman's head with a barbell, and armed robbery. Gudo pleaded down to the charge of aggravated assault, but he had also originally been charged with rape and kidnapping. The rape charge was dropped, as there was no physical evidence of rape. On December 7, 2006, three months after Gudo was arrested, Phoenix police said they were confident he was responsible for the full series of murders, rapes, and robberies that terrorized the city for 13 months. Gudo is believed to have committed nine murders, one more than originally attributed to the baseline killer, the murder of Sofia Nunez on April 10, 2006. Police say ballistics, DNA, and circumstantial evidence prove that Gudo is the baseline killer. During the trial, a forensic specialist with the Department of Public Safety told the Maricopa County Superior Court that Gudo was undoubtedly the source of male DNA found on the left breast of one of the victims with it being 360 trillion times more likely that DNA collected from the crime scene came from Gudo rather than an unrelated black male. Corwin Townsend Gudo's defense attorney at the time, pointed out that Heath's analysis showed only a partial match. Under cross-examination, Heath agreed that Gudo's DNA was consistent with only three of 13 genetic markers. Police recommended that prosecutors charge Gudo with 74 crimes, including nine counts of first-degree murder, five counts of sexual assault, three counts of attempted sexual assault, ten counts of kidnapping, twelve counts of armed robbery, four counts of attempted armed robbery, three counts of sexual abuse, nine counts of sexual conduct with a minor, 13 counts of aggravated assault, and three counts of indecent exposure. On October 31, 2011, Mark Gudo was found guilty of a total of 67 felony counts, including all murders attributed to the baseline killer. On November 30, 2011, Gudo was sentenced to death nine times for the murders and 1,196 years for the other 58 crimes he was convicted for while serving a 438-year sentence after being convicted for 19 separate crimes related to the rape and assault of two sisters during this same crime spree. This sentence totals 1,634 years. In October 2015, Gudo appealed his nine death sentences with an appellate attorney arguing to the Arizona Supreme Court that Gudo should have been tried separately for each of the murders and some other counts. In June 2016, the Arizona Supreme Court upheld nine death sentences and more than 60 other felony convictions against Mark Gudo. In June 2009, a leaked police report indicated another suspect had been questioned in connection to the Vargas and Roman lunch truck murder in February 2006. Terry Winsmith, a black male who matched the description of the baseline killer and who lived near several of the baseline killer crime scenes was documented as a potential accomplice. Smith had a long, violent history of crime in California and Arizona including aggravated assault, armed robbery, and was a suspect in two homicide cases. Smith was released from prison shortly before the baseline killer attacks began, and he was arrested a few days after Gudo. Smith is currently in prison for four years after allegedly holding his family at gunpoint the night before his arrest. Police officer Rusty Stewart compiled 166 pages suggesting that Smith may have been involved in some of the baseline murders. However, police spokesmen say that Smith had been properly questioned and dismissed as a suspect, and state that Smith was in jail at the time of one of the murders. Mark Gudo net worth has been growing significantly in 2019 through 2020. So, how much is Mark Gudo worth at the age of 56 years old? Mark Gudo's income source is mostly from being a successful killer. He is from United States. Mark Gudo's net worth, money, salary, income, and assets is estimated to be between $1 to $5 million. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.